All meeting in order. Additions to the agenda. Are we no longer using that webcam, sir? Which one is that? That's a webcam. We, we've traditionally had that webcam going and this one going, so we have two different views. You have one of your back and one of your front. Well, you can see more people. Right, you can. In the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that no longer tied into our system? You don't know anything about that one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, do you want to check with Orca about yeah. that? Yeah. <coughs> it's helpful, I think, to be able to see people that this camera has not moved in on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so there are no agen uh, additions? Okay. Um, so we were going to add uh, listers had an RFP for the reappraisal. Okay. Sure. Write that down here so you don't forget it. Should we secure sure. and sign in too, if you don't mind? Um, review of minutes October 7th. I think the one thing in there that I saw that, let's see, who am I directing this to? Is this you, Jen? Okay. okay. That I think could improve clarity is under grand list error and emissions form. The third line, if you remove the comma between Lister and Deb Fillion, that would make it clear that it's referring to the Lister Demphilian rather than the Lister and the Demphilian. Okay. So what do you want to do? Take out the comp? Take out the comp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I object. Yeah. Oh, you object? Yeah. Okay. Well, what's your objection, Mr. Hess? Just making a comment. <laughs> we'll see when it comes to my vote. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Any further discussion? I, I make a motion to accept the minutes with the amendment. Thank you. And we have a second. Yes. And is there any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Do I have it? Okay. That was kind of quick. Um, public comment. <coughs> any public here? No? All right. Moving along kind of quickly. Um, USDA Rural Development Bond Auction for Town Garage Discussion with Randy Thompson. She is on the agenda. Hi, Randy. Hi, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, um, we're ready to hear what you have to say. Um, so I was asked to speak just to say a little bit about the program. I had sent over some information to Jen, including a link to our website and our um, applicant guidebook. So we are um, the community, so USDA Rural Development, specifically the Community Facilities Program. Um, we offer subsidized loans to rural communities, um, public bodies, and nonprofits. So our current rate is 3.875%, and that's not dependent on length of loan. So just flat rate, no matter if you go for a you know, 20 or 30 year note. Um, we are accepting applications currently and have funding. Um, so we anticipate to start receiving applications um, from different municipalities across Vermont and New Hampshire within the coming weeks. Um, our timeline, we do take probably three to four weeks to process. Um, we have certain environmental and architecture requirements that need to be reviewed and met. Um, so that can take, that's really where that time comes from, it going to all the different places to our engineers and our architect to get approved um, before we can obligate funds. Are there any specific questions about the program? Yeah, what is the annual uh, interest rate, is that fixed? Through the life of the bond or is that variable it's a fixed rate um so it is we don't do any type of rate lock but it is um it, the rate changes quarterly but is locked at obligation so um it's, it doesn't change too often it, yes it wouldn't change um is there a limit to how much we could borrow no, so we do an underwriting. Um, we can typically finance 100% of a project cost. Uh -huh. I, I would like more explanation to the question about whether it's fixed or variable rate. I didn't understand how it could be 
fixed and changeable quarterly? Could you? They they, re, they redo it. They redo the rate every every quarter, depending on the market rates. So that's not fixed. But once, to us, it is. Well, God, I'm sorry. You can answer. Sorry, so the rate changes quarterly. Um, once your once the funds are obligated, it doesn't change. No. So prior during the application process, it potentially could change again in December if funds aren't obligated by then, but then it would be locked after that point. So we have a 3.875 rate that you're offering today. It might be a different one uh, in a few months, but, um, but whatever we lock in at that time will be good for the 20 or the 30 years. Yes, correct. Okay. Pretty good. Can, can, fabulous. Can we anticipate, what is the fluctuation for, I'm, I'm familiar with interest rates and the Fed and stuff. For instance, what was the rate three months ago or six months ago? So it, um, three months ago, it was 4%. So it has decreased slightly. Um, yeah, the most that I think it's fluctuated, um, you know, either increase or decrease in the last five years has been um, 25 basis points on any given quarter. Wow. Wow. That's a good deal. We're, fall we're falling in love here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now this is, this is, wow. Yeah, what's the downside? Um, it can be, a, like I said, it can be a lengthy process. Um, you know, just it is a government lending program, so it can take a little bit longer than, um, you know, going to a commercial bank. Um, but um, the rates are low, favorable compared to market rate right now. Um, so it's just that initial time that it takes to get through the application process. Wow. Can it go longer than 30 years? And are there options to refinance too? So we um, typically, are, per statute, we can go to 40 years or to the useful life of the item being financed. Um, so for this type of project, we wouldn't typically go past 30. Um, we, and we reserve that, we usually try to stick to 30 just so if something does come up and there is an issue making payments, um, and you need to re amortize over that longer period, you have that option to go to the full 40, um, you know, at that time. But we don't like to typically start off at the 40 year term. Mm -hmm. Scott? Yeah. So, a, a private nonprofit that I'm familiar with got a, a USDA loan to finance uh, heating infrastructure. Uh, in the area some years ago, and uh, my understanding is that the USDA ha became the, the first uh, to be paid off in, in case of any reorganization of, uh, of the uh, organization. And uh, I'm wondering, and we're a municipality, not a nonprofit, uh, I'm wondering if there's any special sort of um, obligation that we would incur to USDA that we should know about in connection with uh, accepting this bond? Um, so we would take a, um, as collateral, we would take the bond. And then usually if it's real estate, we would also put um, a mortgage on the real estate. But that can be discussed depending on, um, you know, the underwriting and how strong um, it depends. So it's, um, Negotiable, but we typically that's what we would typically take. Mm -hmm. R rather than it being based on just future tax flows from yes. each month. Okay. Yeah, correct. Tom, is there any penalty if we should decide to pay it off early? There is no prepayment penalty. Good. Nice. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Jen, what was what was our other rates roughly off the top of your head? Um, a little bit higher. Four I know. Four point one. I can one, look it I up quick. Okay. Four point one. I think is the lowest. Wow. This is this is a big deal. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, we'll, we'll know November fifth <laughs> where we where we stand, and then we can. You may be the first call. <laughs> right. Is we'll that when the? Yeah. We have to get. Yeah. Is that when the bond vote is taking place? Yeah, that's that's the vote. Okay. Yeah, on, ele on election day, and then if it's um, this, this would lower a tax. Sure. We we have also seen so hopefully the bond vote is successful, but if it isn't, you could still apply for our funding, and it would just be contingent on the bond vote eventually passing. And we've seen um, 
success happen after the fact with people knowing the exact rate and terms that are being offered and it not being like a hypothetical loan. Right, right. That's a good idea, actually. So, just think, I, I hope it does pass, but in case it doesn't, just to keep that in mind. Yeah, but if, if we have this tool that, that we know sure. that it could be a little bit less, it does kind of help. Yeah. So we should find out. That's where I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. So, what is the? You said it's kind of a longer time period. If we were to submit an application this week, when is it likely to be approved? Um, I would say realistically, we it's like a three to four week turnaround. Um, especially since we are, it is our busy season right now. Um, so we anticipate uh, quite a few applications coming in within the next few weeks. Um, but it would be processed um, in. I would say four weeks would just be a safe kind of um, timeline. But that 3.875, that's locked in until the end of December, is that correct? Yes. So if we applied now, we could tell taxpayers that right. this is what we're going to get from the USDA if, it, if it's approved. And we could say that right. potentially this could be the tax rate yeah. based upon yeah. that, potentially, yeah. which would be a good selling point. Yeah. Yeah. Like even at a meeting that we're going to have. Yes, sure. mm -hmm. right. Even in front of Porch Forum. Yes. Right. Yep. We got favorable wow. terms. We may this would lower this to that. Yeah. That's cool. a good idea. Okay. I also sent the 20-year um, and 30-year um, amortization schedules to Jen. Yeah. So, so yeah, we have, copy, we have copies of them. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, thank you very much. This is real money. Okay. Anything else we should be asking? I'm good. Jen, our financial expert. You. Um, you said there were environmental restrictions in the beginning, or there there were a couple um, things that you take into consideration. What was that again? Um, so our architect and in, and our um, engineer would just review the site in the potential in the you know plans that are being proposed, and they just review that to make sure that it meets um, certain government regulations. I'm sure. It would. Okay. okay. So at this stage, we have preliminary designs, and the idea is if the bond gets approved, then the building would be designed in its entirety. Can you guys uh, review it on the basis of the preliminary designs? Yes, we typically review the preliminary um, designs and can go design, through that. The estimate is what is going to fluctuate. Right. The design is design's pretty, pretty much pretty safe. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to change much. Uh, it needs to be fleshed out. They, they need to put in where all the chases are and things like that. I well, mean, we know it's not going to be more than what we're. What, what, I, what I heard is that they're going to finish the design work if we approve this. Yeah, for the little stuff, uh -huh. the main structure. Uh, uh, it's yeah. not going to change the whole. Thing. Well, actually, actually, I heard him say uh, that um, they were going to keep an eye on the price of materials, yeah. and you know, if wood construction costs got to be too much because of shortages after the hurricane, they might change it to a metal construction. Yeah. In any case, we know we're not asking anyway, for more than. But anyway, uh, sounds like what yeah, we have, know. they're used yeah. to reviewing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I spoke to the accountant too at Power and Sullivan's, and he said, "Yeah, this is this sounds great." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Nice. Great. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah if you have any other questions, um, feel free to reach out. Um, myself or a local specialist can help you with the application process. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll contact you soon. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Good luck on your vote. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. you. Thanks. We'll need it. Do you have everything you need to begin the application process, Jim? Um, I can get it started, sure. Mm -hmm. I don't have the application yet, but okay. <laughs> you okay. get it. Get it. Do, do we want to ask Jim to start this process and yeah. submit it just as soon as feasible? Absolutely. Yeah. What, how, how does that fit in with the rest of your workload? <laughs> I make things work. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, she she actually that. works longer than the 35 hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she okay. Um, we should get a, some comparisons on these new rates because... Well, that will impact the tax rate. Right. So but, that's what we need to figure. But the, the other banks may have a different rate because it was a couple months ago we got them. 
True. Well, the rates have gone. The rates well, should have gone down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, except Whether the last, they did or not. Except the last two weeks, they've gone back up. A little. Yeah, mortgage not a lot. Uh, I don't know uh, about the bond rate. Right. 20, 30 basis. Does it make sense to go back to points. folks who have given us a quote before and we say, could. hey, these guys will do this for us. Can you mention yeah. that or do it better? Yeah, yeah. just got a bidding okay. match. Right. Why not? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, good. Okay. That's Any more questions? Great rates. No, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, the next one we have a little early. 1495 Coburn Road discussion with Karen <laughs> and Pryor Wilson. These people here. Hi. Yeah. Well, Coburn early. Is that okay? Mr. Wilson, are you expecting more, your first are you name? Expecting more yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you expecting more people or? You're okay with early? Okay. So, what are we looking at? What, so, what was I, our, I wanted to I, pass around the pictures of the property. Yeah, I've seen it. So. <laughs> it's been my I saw yeah. it in real time. Yeah, I saw it in real time. <laughs> it's also on our website. Okay. Yeah. How do you know about Po Onion River Sports? Huh? No. What's that? You're not the Danish guy who used to work no. at Onion River Sports? No, okay. He's the Swedish guy. Yeah, okay. When you tell her, it's a Svensk guy. Did you that? Yeah, do you? Yeah, 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 but if I'm already spelling it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, can you also? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we can talk as the same, right? So, what's our role in, what's East Pompeo's role in this FEMA buyout? So. <laughs> Can I mention the amount of taxes we collect on the property every year? That's like the main thing I would think. Yeah, it's like 3,000. What was it? No, it's like 10,000. Oh, it's 10,000. 9,361. Yeah. So that's, that's revenue we're not going to get anywhere. Correct. Right. So that's why it's a select yeah. board question. It's not really a list of questions. I mean, at some point, the list is going to about this, but we're like, we'll assess it for whatever it is. If it becomes a non-buildable building lot, that's going to be. Oh, yeah. Right. It so looks like it's going to belong to Plainfield. So basically, it's you know, in terms of loss of revenue, that's the select board question, not a list of questions. And the house is in East Montpelier now, I guess. It's the split up in the middle through the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Could, could you? Originally, could, I think part of the. We were concerned that originally East Montpelier would have to buy out one parcel and yeah. fill the other, and then uh, that would be one complication. Now I think the idea is Plainfield would own both parcels and yeah. because it becomes a public green space, it is sort of naturally tax exempt. So for a while we thought maybe we would need uh, an agreement from the select board to forego uh, taxation on that mm -hmm. property. But since it is tax exempt naturally according to James Barstow. Yep, James Barlow, our town Barlow. lawyer, said no, we don't need an agreement. So. So we don't need to do anything. What do we got to do? So the idea is that Plainfield would handle everything and we we don't have any real input, is that right? Unless you want a lot to probably protest about the loss of tax revenue, but right. know, if, if the buyout happens, I think that's inevitable. Yeah. yeah. That's where it goes. Uh, yeah, I've seen what yeah, so they're gonna happened. Tear that seems, down. seems like appropriate they for buyout. They're going to tear it down. The house is Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've uh, been there for... It's awful. Nobody wants that house to stay more than we do. We were planning to live there forever. Yeah. It's just... It's that house for over 200 years, right? Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful house, but it got wrecked last year, and then it got wrecked again this year. Yeah. And it's just now, it doesn't take much, even just a little bit of rain. The river's so high, it just floods everything. The properties, it, it, it's... It's, you've seen the pictures. It was flooded in 2011 too, right? Yeah. Yeah, not as badly as this. Uh, at least we didn't think so, but, um, yeah. Yeah, like it came up high, but it didn't damage the house itself so much. Okay. Last year, the river just changed course and went right through our yeah. house. I mean, it, it took furniture a mile down the road. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. And and that, it was built before 1800. Yeah, it stood there, but now it, the, the landscape has changed. And I mean, we, we thought, you know, 200 years, yeah. this house is going to stand. Yeah. But it, it doesn't oh, wow. anymore. Yeah. We are still technically with FEMA pursuing both the buyout and an elevation grant. Yeah. Elevation is the only thing I can imagine that would have 
that would save the house. Okay. Yeah. yeah, where you could you could lift it up. The, the the land around it would still be wrecked. I mean, the plains yeah. are absolutely floodplains at this point. You know, they, they 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 turn into lakes, and you can't do anything with them. They should really be a floodplain. Yes. Yeah. Would you want your lawn turning into a desert of sand? I mean, it is. It, it is. it oh, is, and it yes. has been. Yeah. You know, we we last year we painstakingly greened it up again, thinking yeah. you know last year was a one-time thing, and and then this year it just yeah. turns into mud again. Mm -hmm. um, this is a perfect example why the state needs to go back to cleaning the rivers out. Stood there for over 200 years. Yeah, the river's bad. The river is just full. And if they don't go in and clean it out, which they used to every year till 1988, never had any statewide flooding until 1992. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what needs to happen. There are some things that's happening out of the river. Yeah. Huh? I think there was a little flooding in 1927. 1928 <laughs> is when they started, and they did it until 1988. And they are cleaning out in some places. They are starting to, finally. Well, right up there on the corner before Twinfield. Yep. In the borough of Hope Barn, yeah, they've cleaned out that stretch of river down to Marvin Bridge. Yep. Yeah, we've talked to them. And they're also cleaning out there. They're trying not to call it there. They call it river remediation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they want to call it out there. there. What is that? It's not politically correct. <laughs> remediation falls in the category. I'm not politically correct, so. <laughs> so. I don't think 2023, I don't think. That would have helped, to be honest. There was just so much water. It yeah. was, that, it was, that was an mean, exceptional rainstorm. We got 19 and a half inches of rain on the hill it was, in but, three days. But this year, yeah. we lost like four feet. Of so the yeah. old riverbanks don't make sense anymore. Yeah. Yep. Rivers want to move. Yeah. So where are you guys living? I mean, we, we were we were in the house when it when the when the there was five feet on the bottom floor, five feet high on the bottom floor. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've just been working on it nonstop for a year, and then <laughs> it got flooded again. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're living there. It's just very, very depressing, and uh, okay. you know, it. it no way. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. That's sad. Yeah. We love the house. It's I just, I mean, I, I would do anything to to save it, but there, we've talked to everybody we can talk to, and there doesn't seem to be. The river wants to go through that land mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And we did. We were hanging a little field across the road, and like, no more of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, really sand. No. Yeah. Definitely not. Wow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what are the pluses and minuses of subdividing it in East Montpelier, just owning the land that's in East Montpelier versus Plainfield owning it and? Not paying taxes on it because they don't need to for a state statute. I mean, I, I think once the buy happens, the only thing is East Montpelier will be responsible for maintenance of, uh -huh. of that site to maintain it in perpetuity as a green space and as an agreement that East Montpelier would need to sign. And we could probably just add that page to the playing field application, or possibly East Montpelier would have to do its own application that goes through the Vermont Emergency Management Office and then to FEMA. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the, I, I think people just want went for simplicity, um, since it doesn't really matter that much anyway. It might doesn't make sense for two towns to be separately responsible for the maintenance of two separate. I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think Karen and I have strong feelings. Right. About this. Right. So our town clerk mentioned if we do a boundary line adjustment, it might hold the process up potentially. Uh huh. Yeah, we had done somebody's going to do a property line adjustment. I suppose after, 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 the plane field. after the fact, we could go, we could approach Plainfield and say, hey, do you want to just give us the, the portion that's in these? Oh, I don't, care. I don't care. I don't think anybody wants to keep that portion. Yeah. But we do have to do a boundary adjustment anyway. Why? To put it on. It's half of this. Is it East Plainfield? No, we are going to adjust the town line. Got to do something. Well, we got to do the, just give the, the idea is that the town of Plainfield would own property in the town of East Montpelier. That's yeah, my so there won't be any. There won't be any adjustment. Right. But what I'm what I'm right. suggesting is that we consider. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I'm just asking the question: Do we want to do a boundary yeah. line adjustment and have it be two parcels instead a subdivision, basically? And then instead of us paying Plainfield to uh, keep it up in perpetuity that we take care of our side and they take care of their side. I don't know. Maybe it's just nicer to let Plainfield take care of it. That's 
what, what, what needs to be yeah. done? Well, well, why wouldn't you? We don't want to yeah. take care of it. No. Let them do it. So There's it has to be maintained as a green space. Um, what does that mean? So like, um, you can't build on it, and um, That's easy you to do can't, on. like if you wanted to do a dog park, you couldn't put a fence. So okay. there's certain rules and regulations. So it's not active there. maintenance, it's just things you aren't allowed to do. Uh, so well, there's some maintenance, perhaps, if people park in to trash up and what's just like to do. It's still a green space. Or it's just, yeah. yeah, but. So they may, somebody may have to go down and pick up the trash. Uh -huh. so or, was that, or are they going to mow it? Or are they going to mow it? Or are they going to mow it? If it's a town of fields property, I guess we make them pick up their trash. <laughs> well, that's what I think. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I want to yeah. borrow it. <laughs> like, let them right. deal with it. Let them maintain it. Yeah. Why? Why not? So. Yeah. Oh boy. If I had a bunch of property, uh, trash dumped on my property, I'd have to take care of it. But I still think there needs to be a boundary adjustment of some kind because we're giving the land to Plainfield, so they have to put. Mm, we don't want it. I, I, I don't think so. I think you're missing the point, Seth. I think that Plainfield would own property in East Mount Plainfield. I get that. Yeah. I understand. But so, we have to feed that to them or something. No, well, they're no. property. They own it now. They own it. Okay. okay. Then FEMA's going to buy it and, okay. and give it to Plainfield uh -huh. or something. Correct. As long as towns are allowed to own parts of the towns, I think it should work. Yeah. Is that that happens in the cemeteries? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All well, the time. I protested the one on top of the hill. They didn't they want to give it to us. No, but I said, wait a minute. Why should we own or what cows want? Want no, they want us to take that over. Yeah. Right. Like, wait a minute. No. Yeah. no. Well, that made sense not to do that. Yeah. That so was going to cost us money. They they own land in these computers. No, they don't now. No, what? no, wait a minute. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> that, that's, that's irrelevant to this conversation. Right, it's, uh, yeah, let's keep this in the... I think that's a good simple. idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Sounds good. Well, <laughs> is there anything that we can help you with? Thank you. Um, Other than, I mean, it's, it's good information. Well, At least we know what's going on. <laughs> Obviously. It's been, it's been a hard, it's been a hard time. Um, thank you. If you know somebody who will pay to relocate it in the town, um, <laughs> That house is so wonderful. That was built by the same people who built the brick church here. Really? And the house up on the road. Wow. Inside. That's a brick house, too. I heard there were two brothers that built that. Yeah, that place is crazy. Church. They used to meet together on Sundays, build that house, build that one, and then Sundays build this one, hmm. that church. Hmm. But I don't know, that's folk store, folk lore. Anyone who's been through Moortown in the last week or so? No. There's yeah, I did today. Did you see that house? I did. There's a house right next to the road that's on, they must be eight by eights or something, stacked Lincoln Log yep. style, mm -hmm. and it's like 15 feet in the air. Well, I, I paid Messier Moving to move three houses in New Hampshire to different sites, uh -huh. and it worked out very well. I couldn't figure out what was, it seemed like it was too high I don't know to if you guys would be, be, be ready to be moved. Oh, they're moving. But they're right here in town, messy and moving. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you talked to them. I want to actually. But it was temporary because it was I mean, if it's Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been done. I don't know. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it ridiculous the numbers? It's a much more complicated process. It is a more complicated process. Going north and uh, so yeah, and I think the chances of success of water, I think it's more competitive. Um, there's and a gas station. Just like we buy out yeah, the town, right the town right champion. Right in the village, right by the power uh, station, yeah. And it's immediately after the gas station. And the, oh, yeah. part of the problem is that yeah. even yeah. raising the house, the land around it is still going to be flooded. Right, but what I was thinking is if you could move it. Move it somewhere, yeah. I, I would love I that. bet brick houses don't move very well. I was just going to say that. It probably said it could be, it could it be could lifted. Be they say it can come up but not down. <laughs> so when they elevate it, <laughs> when they, elevate it they literally build the, the foundation wall up to it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe they could do that. But it does seem like moving it would be pretty brittle. But they've done it with like town halls and I mean, is it, brick, brick, brick. Is, it, is, it, is it silly money that they're talking about? Silly. It's not cheap. Well, like I said, I had... When I worked for the Trust for Public Land, we moved yeah. three buildings. Is it silly the money that they quoted you? I think it's uh, one of them was. Yeah. It was a smaller yeah. structure, though. It was a what? Smaller That's structure. Just the the elevation. 350. But I don't think there's any uh, Silly money. Yeah. Timber frame? They didn't put there the was, there was timber. The one they moved down there timber had timber frame, frame hmm. with brick on the outside. Yeah, yeah. right. Is that house that And yeah. it would have to have. Our house? No. Is it timber frame? It's It's brick. Yeah, I don't know. That, 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 that would be tougher. That'd be tough. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
We've looked into all the options we could think of. Oh, we didn't want to do this, but yeah. Wow. All right. Well, thank you. Well, um, I don't know. Uh, well, isn't, we haven't done anything. Well, I mean, no, you're we, not. We've been receptive. You're not to throwing your obstacles plan. in our way. We, well, no, yeah. it'd be the opposite. <laughs> I appreciate that. Whatever we can do to help, of course. Thank you. Um, Are you going to help, Scott? I'm not that strong to lift this building. <laughs> <laughs> that would be helpful. Yeah, no, I guess we just need to uh, work things out with Plainfield and see how that goes. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but if we can help push the application along or whatever, please sure. reach out to us. Okay. I mean, we, we, we have no idea what we're doing, so we're just trying to talk to people and, and figure out who to talk to. And have whatever. you approached FEMA and all that? Um, yeah, well, FEMA, FEMA gave us a, a large flood insurance the first year um, and I mean they've assessed it you know they've seen the damage yeah. on, officially on paper and all that but I don't I don't know what comes next um, I think uh, all the painful properties will now go to the Vermont office the Vermont emergency management office and then I think one way or another we don't directly interact with FEMA in this process yes. it's either two steps or one step so they have about 30 houses. Yeah. Yeah, the whole central corridor. Wow. Do you do you know what the time frame is? Do they have the money to move forward on this? One right or two years since over here. Yeah. Yeah, FEMA is about slow as that. So I've got a client in Wolka that her house got flooded for the third time in 2023. And it's been approved for a buyout since 2023 and it still hasn't gone <coughs> through. This still hasn't happened. Still hasn't happened. Yeah, it's pretty slow. So, just, just so you know, this is not yeah, a quick process. We're, we're aware of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just go through a few more times. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Every vote counts. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you I'm for sorry. coming in. Yeah. I'm really sorry about yeah. the house. No, yeah. I mean, thank you. Know, you guys are great. That's such a nightmare. It, 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 it's been so oh sad. Oh, my God. I saw it for the second time, you know, and like, oh no, the <laughs> yeah. sand is even deeper. I know. You know, know like, everyone's, everyone's been watching our disaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Drive by. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, well. Uh, well. Let us know if we can do anything. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, very much. Very much yeah. Well, we're here, but um, one of our members wants to start canceling our meetings, so we're usually here the first and third Mondays. <laughs> but one, one of the members didn't want to have a meeting if there's nothing to discuss. Oh, there's something to discuss. <laughs> so, well, this is this is very important. Yeah, yeah, I, I, this is this is this is yeah. this is worth coming in just for ten minutes to help these I know. people. Yeah, yeah. Without, this that, is that, democracy. Was, that wasn't that wasn't we're my very, point, Mister Select Board Chair. Yeah, I am too. All right. Well, okay. um, should we get out of your way? Or sure. You can, you can yeah. stay. I mean, you guys are fun. We should talk and talk soon, all right? Okay. Yeah. It's free, free cold water and whatever. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, you don't want any more water, though. <laughs> I wish we could for alcohol, but we probably shouldn't. Um, I'll bring it next time. Okay. So the next item, and we're on time. Anyway, let me make just one quick point. <laughs> Oh, Back to the USDA. I mean, this USDA. this is a lot of money yeah. that we really need to push mm -hmm. the the interest rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know that, but okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Big 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 difference. Okay. Okay. Okay, Scott. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Would you continue? I'd like to add Deb Fillion as the one who told me about it. Yes, thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb. Thank, thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's because my next door neighbor is the director of Vermont and New Hampshire, appointed by Biden to head the USDA rural development for those two states. Um, wow. And I happened wow. to mention to her that we were going to get a bond. And she said, where are you going to get the bond from? <laughs> I said, well, maybe the Vermont bond thing should come to us. We will do better. Yeah. Wow. Big time. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're getting a little late, but anyway. You should try to keep us on uh, schedule. The next Chairman. item is supposed to be at 7, the Lister cell phone request possible motion. Yeah, That's bigger, something you want? We have bigger fish to fry, yeah. But we'll talk about that, too. Oh, you have bigger fish than the cell yeah. phone? Yeah, we have an addition to the agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Oh, that's right. We might as well do it all together. I would appreciate so it. So why do you want a cell phone? 
because our, well, three reasons, but our training, most of all, is telling us do not use your personal cell phone to take photographs or to do anything listerly, listerly because it can be subpoenaed if you end up in court. Which, you know, when I was hearing that, I thought, what are the chances of us ending up in court? Yeah. <laughs> now it's but now we might. Yeah, right. now we're in court. So the advice has been from the beginning, don't use your own personal computer, don't use your own personal cell phone. If you don't want to have your equipment or your files or your emails all subpoenaed. But what does that mean? But I guess you don't want to have your personal cell phone in court. Really yeah. Okay. And it turns out, according to the plan we have, it may get a free phone and it costs thirty dollars a month for the extra line. So it didn't seem like it was a big ask. Thirty nine ninety nine. Forty dollars. I'm not sure. Forty. Yeah. Sorry. Forty. An extra lot. How many? How many town cell phones do we have? I, I was just going to ask that. Do we still have the one for the? Um, Sony industry. Sony industry. Mm -hmm. He still has one. Because I haven't seen that. I saw Sony administrator uh, Rob Foreman. Something to raise. Maybe that door. Oh, so we do have cell phones there. We do have cell phones in town. Yeah. Three cell phones? At least. Um, I'm not sure about the road crew. They're not. I'm still looking at that. Guthrie's got one. Guthrie has one. Yeah, but the rest of them don't. No. President, no. no. So when I took my animal control officer training initially, then we were also told uh, don't be careful about using your personal cell phone for taking pictures because it could get subpoenaed and end up in court and, right. and uh, that would be bad. Um, I have I have an old cell phone with a camera on it that I'm willing to donate for taking pictures and I don't care if it gets subpoenaed and ends up in court. Yeah, I wish I'd saved my old cell phone too yeah. for the same reason. It was a perfectly good camera. Yeah. Yeah. So would that so the fee would be less than forty dollars a month? It would be nothing. No, you don't need oh, a cell phone. Oh, just how, oh, do, you, just, you, how just, do you transfer the images if you can't email them to yourself? Because that's what we're doing now. We're taking well, it, pictures and then emailing to. It has Wi-Fi, so anywhere you can connect to Wi-Fi, right. you can do it. Or it has a um, mini SD card, so you mm -hmm. can make sure that they go onto that. Uh -huh. You don't need you don't need a cell phone tower when you have Wi-Fi. Yeah, and there's no problem with using your phone for. Phone calls is there because there's no recording of the phone calls, right. so all it, all it proves that you made a phone call. Right. It's just a picture. Though. Yeah. It's yeah. mostly for some reason. It's mostly the photographs. Yeah. Oh. The digital copy of a picture is not acceptable. They want to have the actual physical medium that. Oh, yes. It's, it's on. Picture. That's that's what we were told. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't make sense. And to also, me. sometimes you take five photographs, you end up putting one in the file. Maybe somebody wants to see the other four. Oh, right. And I don't know if you're allowed to. Erase them because as soon as you make them, are they then part of the public record, or when do they become part of the public record? Because right. you can't just discard public records right. willy nilly. So right. then you're kind of like, crap. Do I have to leave this on my phone forever now? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay. Yeah. So, so we need to mean, solve that problem. Give her a phone? I'll give you a phone. Yeah. Okay. Phone? I might have an old phone. I'll see if I. An old Android. Android. I don't know if yeah. I gave my old phone back, okay. which is not that old. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll drop it, it off on Thursday. How's that? Yeah. At the just use the yeah. pictures. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Four hundred eighty dollars. Okay. So we'll set you up. We'll see how that works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now the okay, other. Okay. Now thing. the real deal. This, this wasn't that exciting, though, was um, it? Um, we didn't get a lot of jokes out of this one. We just trying to remember if I've got an old phone to donate. We just save the town five hundred bucks. We don't want. We don't want yours. It's already all wet. Yeah. Put in some rice. Put in some rice. It'll be fine. Okay. Um, so we have to get going on the reappraisal, and so in September I sent out five emails. There's a there's a list of 14 approved reappraisal firms in the state of Vermont. You yeah. have to stick to the list. Yeah. So we picked the five we thought we might want to work with the most because we either knew of them or had you yeah. know, some experience yeah. with them. And two of them just said no flat out. They were too busy. Couldn't do it. One of them said we'd have to do the site inspections ourselves and the data entry and change to their software program for our camera. And that seemed like, well, that was two strikes against them, so that wasn't right. really serious. Mm -hmm. And the other two are still alive, mostly Nemric, because they would use the software that we're all using right now. Yeah. And we have this contract with Nemric that is spectacular support. I mean, today I ran into a problem, I get them on the telephone. And the guy I had talked to was busy, but he called me back like in five minutes and spent yeah. a lot of time with me fixing it. So, I mean, Nemeric is great for support. The other guy, um, he could put us on a schedule two years sooner, 2027 instead of 2029, yeah. 
but he wants us to change to Catalyst, which is the software program he's using, and he's willing to come in and, if we're willing to be open-minded about it, <laughs> to give us a demonstration and convince us that we want to use it. Of course, talking to the Nemeric guy today, I had to ask him about it, even though I know he's got a conflict of interest because obviously yeah. he works for Nemeric, yeah. so he's going to say, yeah. use ours. And he says, you know, you're probably going to pay more for that. It's got a lot of bells and whistles that you're not going to use, and then you don't know what kind of support you're going to get. And right now, you know, Nemeric is there. Right. Every time I've called them, you know, mm -hmm. literally. Is there any cost difference? I don't know. Uh, well, we already own the Nemeric software. We just well, that's what I was wondering. We own the Nemeric software. Yeah, there's that it's too. It's kind of a right, kind of a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. But the reappraisal, what's that? I guess you're asking the question between the rea the two companies for the reappraisal. Well, I, I don't have bids. I haven't asked for bids because technically we have to do an RFP first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I was just putting out feelers to see if anybody yeah. out there was even interested, you know. Well, my, just on the Nemeric, I mean, my understanding is that we use modules of Nemeric in all, all throughout the office here, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's yeah. not just So we already have a contract so with them. So if, and... if we went to Catalyst, then all of a sudden the Lister software would be in a different system than the rest of the town. So yeah, and I asked, I asked the guy at Nemeric what the interface between them was like, and it's more like what we have right now with VTPi, where you have to take your Nemeric file and load it up into the cloud, and then download it into the other software, and you know there's some kind of interface that's indirect like that. Whereas yeah. right now we have Nemeric and Microsoft talking to each other. Yeah. So for yeah, for a number of reasons, it's the ease. You know, the path of least resistance is go with somebody who's willing to work with the software program we already have, yeah. which is not an unusual software program. So there must be others <laughs> on this list. Two of the others on the list that we knew used Nemeric were two of the people that said no because they were too busy. Okay. I mean, they're both actually hired by towns as appraisers, and so they have their hands full just doing reappraisals for their own towns, you know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I guess I have some questions. I mean, I, I did a draft RFP, and I've already started marking it up with a couple of improvements on it. I got my hands on a couple of other towns' RFPs, and we're all using the same template, clearly. I mean, <laughs> the same sentences are being picked up. So, uh, I mean, if you want me to no. work with Jen on finalizing the RFP, yeah. I think it's in pretty good shape already. I've already realized. I but who are you putting that RFP out to? Well, we've got a list of 14 people. We can only work with these 14 people. We've already asked five of yeah. them if they're interested. We can actually send out that feeler email that says, would you like an RFP? Here's our 411. This right. is what we're looking everybody. for. If they say no already, right. then they'll no, sign they again. Yeah. It's easy, easy. Yeah. But we're just required to do that. But, yeah, yeah. Obviously. yeah. So of the five people we sent out, one has asked for an RFP. The other guy already sent us his bid. <laughs> oh, really? Just like jumped ahead. It's <laughs> like, yeah. I know what the RFP is going to say. They all say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the bid. Right. So yeah. we're talking about 2029? Yeah. OK, does that put us in now, jeopardy? Now, there's yeah. one other thing, huh? Because our CLA is yeah. so far out of whack. I know. It's going to only get worse, right? Right. It's just going to get worse. But does that put us any, in any disadvantage with our state you know, interaction with us? education rate and all that because that plays into that the CLA. It affects our education tax rate, yeah. It does. Yeah. It's not gonna help. No. Not gonna help. It's right. Better exactly. off when you get the CLA more in line with the sales of properties in the in the town. Yeah. yeah. But well, there really yeah. isn't much we can do about it. Actually that. one of the things I was gonna add here is the coefficient of dispersion because it used to be the CLA that triggered the townwide reappraisals now is the, the coefficient of dispersion, the COD. Oh, that's what it is. And ours it's is not, above, ours is above twenty. Yeah, they changed it. Oh, so okay. And the coefficient of dispersion shows the oh, God. the number of properties that have a divergence from what was expected. Yeah. Anybody by the else want to explain right? this? Because I have to go read my. I actually figured out how to explain it. I put it in the town report. I can read it out of the town report, but I can't recite yeah. it off the top of my head. Well, it used, I, be, it used to be the CLA would draw. Right. Down to under 80 percent or whatever. It was. Yep. Now is a trigger for reappraisal. But now you're telling now it's the different. COD going above 20 percent. Oh, this coefficient of dispersion, which has to do with you know how far off the low ones are from the high ones, and you know how, right. how un, it's like almost how unfair is it right. across the town? Okay. Because if everybody were at 70.33 percent, it would be perfectly fair. That's, yeah. That's right. the problem. Exactly. But when some people just got re, you know reassessed because they put a garage in their house last week, and somebody else hasn't been looked at since 2009, and they've done complete gut of the inside of their house or something, you know things are getting out of whack yeah. more yeah. and more, right? Yeah. 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 So. Okay. And, you don't have to explain and some of that comes across in the <laughs> sales because if we have somebody in there is two hundred thousand dollars and yeah. they just sold their house for seven hundred fifty thousand, yeah, that's way more than just fair market value. Yes, that's like 
oh dear, yeah. Yeah. we don't have an accurate assessment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any chance that we will get, or any mechanism for us to get penalized by the state for yes. not doing the townwide reappraisal when we can't get somebody to do it? No, <laughs> obviously everybody's in the same boat, yeah. clearly. So um, it's just, just our taxpayers, or the people who are selling the properties uh, who are are hit by this. Uh, I don't or, think this, that doesn't matter to no. at all. All that all it's doing is it's well in a reappraisal you're going to shift the tax burden around a little bit. Right. That's all you're going to. So do. individual taxpayers will be advantaged or disadvantaged by sure. the reappraisal. Right. Right. That's all it's going to. But happen. in yeah. an ideal world, if everybody were assessed, you know, fairly and pretty evenly across the board, and we reassessed everybody at twice the current value, our tax rate would be half, and everybody would have the same right. tax bill. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's what should happen, but that yeah. doesn't usually happen. Mm -hmm. No. Because it's shifted around. Right. Depending yeah. on what you. Yeah. Well, you've done the inside of the house, the listeners haven't seen it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there's one other little <laughs> wrinkle in this whole thing. So I, I have a few questions for you, like how many, if we, send, if we, if we offer the RFP to all, people, all the people on this list, how many responses do we have to get for it to be a legitimate bidding? I thought it was only three a.m. Is that, and that's, I mean, that's, that's a town that's, policy? That's normal. I believe so. So you want three? Well, and we don't no, have to take I mean, the lowest if one. You, right. right. If, you, if, you request, if you request an RFP from 15 people and you only get one response, You've got documentation, you only got one. Uh -huh. But you have documentation that you sent it out to 15 people. Okay. You can't manufacture Okay, so now here's, a, here's one other little wrinkle. Right. Um, there's also, I mean, when that, one, when that one guy said, as long as you guys do all the inspections and the data entry, then we can put you on the schedule sooner. Well, we wouldn't want to do it ourselves because we already have enough work. But we could hire our own assessor and say, okay, we don't, the reason that they can't do it faster is because there's a limited number of assessors out there and they've already signed all their assessors to the jobs they're doing, right? If we had our own assessor and said, our guy's gonna start, he's gonna spend 18 months or 12 months or whatever, and we're gonna have all the inspections and the data entry done, what we need from the reappraisal company is doing things like land schedules and neighborhood grades and things that have to do with mass appraisal townwide and also the cost tables that go actually get into the software so that when we say metal roof, 760 square feet, there's a cost per square foot that yeah. reflects fair market value now. We're working with cost tables that were set up in 2009. Yeah, yeah. And so we're getting 2009 values, which is the only way for it to be fair because if I appraise a brand new house today, it should be at 2009 prices for it to be fair with everybody else in town, right? Right. So those cost tables stay fixed until the next time you do a town. Yeah, yeah. And we use Marshall and Swift, which is a national costing thing for like how much a two by four costs and all that sort of stuff. That's all built in. Our own appraiser would be just a guy who does site visits and keys the data in, but wouldn't be responsible for that mass appraisal stuff. You'd still need Nemeric to do that. But I'm talking to the guy at Nemeric today when I had that Nemeric problem. I said, by the way, <laughs> you know, can I talk to you about the reappraisal a little bit? And he said, you know, we could probably move you up on the schedule if you had your own appraiser. It's the appraisers that are in demand, you know. So are there all these freelance appraisers willing to be? Well, it so happens that I have a very interesting neighborhood. One neighbor's telling us about the bond from the government. <laughs> this other neighbor is a fee appraiser, which means he's been freelancing and bidding on jobs for banks and stuff like that, and he will do reappraisals for people that are refinancing their loans or buying a new house because the bank doesn't want to loan $300,000 on a house that's not worth that, right, you know. So they, somebody pays, probably the buyer, for an appraisal every time there's a loan like that or refinance. Re, uh, mm -hmm. So he's been doing a lot of that and of course when the real estate market was really hot, he had all the work he could handle and now it's kind of cooling off. And he's, he actually applied for a job that Nemrick advertised for recently for an appraiser. And they told him he was overqualified. So I asked the guy at Nemrick today, what does that mean? Did you think he was going to jump ship as soon as the market heated up again or something? He said, well, he said, we thought about him for a while, but we actually were hiring for a different region, and we'll probably be hiring again if it were closer to our area. Because they either have to pay his mileage to drive back and forth all the time to go to some town like Bennington or something, or put him up in a so, hotel. So what would the, OK, so what you're saying is this person the appraiser, is he going to be doing the whole thing? 
he would inspect all of the properties in town and collect the data. Yeah. And hopefully put the data in. We don't talk to him about that. But the point is that's it's not our. But he's going to work with Nemec or no? Because he's not going to work. Ideally, with he'd be working for Nemec. And he did yeah. try to get a job with Nemec, but they hired somebody else. Yeah, yeah. He could be working for us because there are some towns where the listers themselves are doing all of the inspections, usually smaller towns than ours. Okay. And doing all the data entry, and they're just hiring Nemec or the reappraisal company off of this list to do the mass stuff, you know, the, yeah. the software stuff. And yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So we could do that. We could do that. It would t mean taking on more of the responsibility at our end instead of their end. And if in the end all we accomplished was moving Nemric a year or sooner or something, it might not be worth the trouble. You know? Right. But how much sooner? Well, at, at yeah. this point, why don't you just send out RFPs to all 15? We're here. We, we meet twice a month, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to stick to that schedule. And we, we, meet and twice we might even meet more often. Than that. <laughs> or we could meet, meet more often. And then let's see what, yeah. what prices. I mean, if something, yep. you know, if this guy says, I can do your appraisals for a half a million dollars or two million dollars, we might not want to hire him. I'm being, oh. I'm being facetious. No, but yeah, no. I actually have some dollars for that. Um, I don't know if I should talk about no, I think actual you, amounts because people haven't bid on the job yet. No, don't talk about No, we don't want to know. Right, right. I, I would just put the bids out to all 15. Yeah. And now know that, be, that they're not all 15. That would be in the newspaper tomorrow if we start saying things like that. Really? If, if I started saying what the numbers were? Yeah, yeah. that's not yeah. a good idea. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would suggest sending out okay. to all 15. Yeah. 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 If we need okay. to talk about that, we can go into executive session. Yeah, but we don't need to. We don't need no. to. Yeah, there's too much information. Uh, so anyway, I gave you the draft I came up with, but it, while I was sitting over there listening, I already added a few things to it. And Is the RFP going to work? Yeah. But well, we don't need to get it. You don't so, have to. Yeah, so I see that in this draft. Do you have to, do you have to approve the RFP before it goes out? Yes. Probably, yes. Yeah. But I thought you were going to But I want to be sending these out before two weeks from now. I mean, if I'm going to send out an email tomorrow to the other people on the list that I didn't already send the email out to, they're going to send back <clears> saying, <throat> yeah, we're interested to send us the RFP, and I want to be able to send it to them. Okay. Yeah. S send, send us the to us. May I talk, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Never stopped you before. <laughs> this is true. Why don't you, when you have your completed RFP, if you have it 12 o'clock tonight, make some changes, yep. give us 24 hours. And around. if anybody has any changes or whatever, contact you or Seth, however okay. you want to do well, it. Well, usually we just respond, right? Okay. Yeah. And, just, of course, this, this isn't also. the contract. Yeah, but we need to approve it. Right. We, oh, that's just the body. Yeah. That's in the policy? I mean, that, well, that's well, been we a kind of practice. That's pretty uh, We can do that. We could authorize Deb to complete the RFP with Jen, uh, with Jen and um, pending, pe pending, no pending objections. objections. <laughs> yeah, pending input from the yeah. slide forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, I have two other towns here, and they're almost word for word the same. I mean, so. it's. Oil. It's the contract yeah. that really is the important part, and we're going to want the lawyer to read the contract yeah. and everything yeah. else, because That's Ross like Ross said last time there were things that got agreed to verbally, but they didn't get written into the contract, yeah. and when push came to shove, didn't he was happen. told it's not in the contract, so oh, he ended right. up doing things he thought they were going to do. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's good. Well, yeah, make sure, right. make sure Seth looks at He may have some major, major objections to Who's many that? of these issues in here. Me? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. You're Seth. Yes. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I, I noticed that you, you have Nemerk in here, and the reappraisal project will be completed using this software. So that's that's important to have in there. When yeah, if that's, Wild if that's, if that's def I mean, okay. I, I'm not that attached to Microsoft as a software program. I mean, I bitch about it all the time because it's not right. the best program I've ever worked with. But there is something to be said for the continuity of the support yeah. that we've got from Nemerk and their responsiveness yeah. and all that stuff. And I mean, you know, I've, they can just take over my computer and move things around while I'm sitting there just watching them move the mouse around and, you know, it's done. Yeah. Yes, sir. I move to authorize a town administrator to complete the request for proposal for a town-wide reappraisal with input from the select board on the next draft from the listers. Is that a reasonable way to raise a motion? I will yeah. second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Right. Aye, aye, aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all your work. Yeah. Yeah. It's enjoy your new, enjoy your new used picture phone. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Sure, whatever that will be. All right. Anything else? We have yeah. warrants to sign. Uh, uh, 
What else do we have? We have a town administrative report. Yeah, we have that. Normally, we meetings have we go like an hour or two, two hours. But Mr. Hess, you skipped sorry? over the warrants. The warrants are next. I know. Okay. I was just talking so, to our guests here. Oh, you were? Yeah, in case they are really energized <laughs> and want to come back in two weeks. It could be a longer meeting. I'm just, it could be. If, 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 if it doesn't get canceled, but I think, it it'll, canceled. I think we'll have it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pass around the warrants, and you're going to do your thing? Okay. Okay. So um, we had 600 voters have voted out of our 2,100 voters so far. How many? 600. Huh? 600 have already voted? Yep. Yeah. Can, we send the Can we send the ballots back to them and say, hey, yes. read this letter before <laughs> <laughs> Can you change your vote on this and send it back? <laughs> this, this is the bond issue for our town garage. Okay. Um, the funding request study committee applications are all in, and the committee is going to meet November 7th, 9.30 a.m. here. Uh, the town garage mailing went out to the EM voters on 10.17. Thank you. It went out to the voters are in the mail on the 17th? Yep. That's quick turnaround. Great. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks for writing it. Yeah, yeah, thank you for writing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for writing it. It was a good job. Carl well, well, well done. Stepped up and yeah. did, a, did a lot of work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the town hall paving and the center circle work is now in progress. Um, I'm going to meet and the treasurer with Down Street, um, 1028. Uh, so if you want to let me know any of your inputs for that meeting, let me know. Tax sale is due. Uh, and this is this is this for this. What are the meeting? What's the meeting about? That money that we're giving them, so uh, the Sandy Pines Fund. Uh, right. So we gave Down Street some money. Oh. With the expectation. Yeah, you were here. Well, you know, you were in a hurry to get out of here, but. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I'm gonna, wear, I'm gonna wear a little button that says anti um, pontification. <laughs> what, what, is there a word in Swedish for pontification? <laughs> that is a word. Because I'll use it. I'll put it down here and I'll use it every time. Yeah, we had, it was about a year ago. Okay, I don't uh, recall. I don't recall. Okay, that. so the Sandy Pines Fund is money they paid back to the town that we lent them years ago. Oh. Okay, and then it's been sitting there, and the state's oh. saying, "What are you gonna do with that money?" And we haven't really had a project to put the money into, okay. or we don't have the way to implement that process. We just don't have it. Okay. So we decided last year to give them the money, but we put some strings on it that, you know, East Montpelier projects get preference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. The preference. Yeah, I, yeah. I recall that now. The, okay. the, the word preference. And Carl, Carl yeah, 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 yeah. like, hey, maybe we should use this in East Montpelier. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So I, I recall that now. Like, yeah. we gave, did we give them like a two year? Well, that's this is part of the process. Three yeah. years? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, uh, we're beyond the one year mark. Okay. Yeah. So we have two more years. Okay, I recall that now. Okay. You were here. Um, January 9th, 2025, we're having a tax sale at 10 a.m. Uh, also, Sullivan Powers and Company, our external auditor, we're having a discussion on the next select board meeting on 11-4. So we have zero findings, which is great. And then they do have a few recommendations that they're going to give it, that they're going to review. Um, a reminder that we have the town garage tour November 2nd, which is Saturday, 8.30 to 9.45. Light refreshments will be provided there. And then we have the town garage forum at the elementary school at 10. So that's the informational meeting. No and that's, a, that's 12 hours. No. Nope. 12, 8, oh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. No, that's for the voting. Yeah. Oh, that's the vote. Oh, that's that's the vote. Right. Right. I'm ahead of myself. Yeah. So the town garage vote is November 5th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. No, yeah. pi no pie contest. A um, few more items. Oh, just be before we go on, the tax sale, uh, in the past in tax sales, we have put in a minimum bid ourselves. They uh, cover the taxes. Yeah. Are we yeah. going to do that? This time? What's the, what's the property? Am I allowed to ask? We had six different properties. I have to email it to you. But I don't think all it's six It's got to be public sale. information. Yeah. It is, yeah, we, we tend not to. Yeah, we tend not to. Say that means. Dandy names around. Yeah. Mr. Hess. Um, so, is it six properties still? I thought I think we it was managed some five agreements. or six. I'd have to okay. follow up on that one. Wow. Okay. Really? An email. Well, I can email it to you. 
Well, we do have to figure out if we want to put them in the bid in. Uh, so uh, we've uh, done that in the past. And uh, it's just good problem. practice, is my understanding, because well, you kind of have to. Because if we don't put in a minimum bid and nobody bids on it, right. then we have to go through the whole process all over again. Yeah. 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 So we'll have to figure that out, but we have a little bit of time. Um, the other thing is uh, we have the security cameras running now. Um, Are we on camera right now? No. That's on the box, are you? It's so the parking lot, the back ramp. They're cool, you should check them out. We, uh, the the front cool. lobby area, the front entry, and the front office area. Yeah. So, and it's yeah. panoramic. So you can see the park and ride too. Oh, nice. So I have it on my cell and then my computer, and Rosie has it on her computer so we can see. Thanks. Yeah. And that's what the guy was doing here today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you notice? Know? Should we check out the camera? So uh, I, st I streaked in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> Way too much information. <laughs> Okay. He's gonna go back and watch the video. Sorry. The VLCT passive survey, which is just the insurance survey, and then we completed the EECBG grant. It's the Energy Block Grant. Yeah. They asked for a pre-award risk assessment, so we completed that. So hopefully, we'll get an answer back. That's it. Wow. Okay. Thank you again for all your yeah. hard work. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything else. Apparently not. It's seven thirty. So yeah, we're not meeting. We're not meeting before the second. No. Nope. The second. I mean, I'll be there. And I'll be there. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. Right. As I told you. Do you got me there? I'll be there. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be there too. You, you guys can come too if you maybe because you might want to move to East Montpelier at some point. Well, they're, they're, living they're, they're living in East Montpelier. What? They're living in East Montpelier. They're they're living in East Montpelier. Is the bedroom in East Montpelier? <laughs> yeah, they basically are. <laughs> but I bet you're not voting in East Montpelier. I am voting in East Montpelier. You are. Yeah, I, I tried uh, signing up at Plainfield, and they. We love you even more. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so your voters here. You can see me on the panel on the camera. You, you're, 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 our, you're our constituents. Yeah. Oh. Do, you, do you have plans to get it by a different property each month of year? We cannot even think past just yeah. what's yeah. going to happen. Try not. No kidding. Yeah. 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 Well, we'd but love, we'd to, love it here. We'd love you to be here. Maybe you'll run for the select board. <laughs> because I need Honestly, more people. This, this is so nice. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But it's so nice. Me either. I really, but it's honestly, it's so comforting just seeing people be like competent and human at the same time. It's it's very. That's very just nice. the thing. Yeah, the competent thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we could talk in a minute. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.